Amen. It's currently pouring out, so you may hear a lot of background noise. And this video is very different than the ones I made in the past. This is not about stuttering. This is this is a video that I'm making because I feel like if I were to die, I would want this information out. And there's a few thoughts I have in my brain. I'm going to cover one idea in this vi in this video. But the thought of me dying without the potential for the world to know of this. I'm sure it's already out there, but for just another voice out there that says this makes me feel like I'm I would be holding back the world of a gift of something extremely valuable and something I feel as truth. Like it's resonating, it resonates with my core with this feeling of truth. And it may be just my truth, it may just be true for me, but I'm gonna share it out there anyway because it feels extremely true. And this video is for specifically men. I don't really know why, I'm sure it applies to women as well, but it's just, something tells me to like make this specifically t to men talk to as if i'm talking to a man talk to as if i'm talking to the younger version of myself who goes through his own individual challenges that's different challenges than what a woman goes through even though this probably applies to women too i'm just going to speak like I'm speaking to my younger self and I'm also speaking to anyone any, any man who feels like they're living in a kind of gray haze because this is common for me this has happened for many periods of my life feeling like I just I just existed and I wasn't in life and to be honest it doesn't really feel like I'm in a gray haze usually when I'm in that gray haze I only realize it when I'm outside of it when I leave that gray haze I look back and think fuck I wasn't living life I was purely existing for those months or for those years but I only see that when I have the comparison to what living life feels like. To what being in life feels like. Being fucking involved in life. Feeling life. And it's like the fish out, the fish in water, the fish out of water uh, analogy. And I think it's such a profound feeling. But since... When I'm in that state of that gray haze, I don't really know when I'm in life or not. I mean, I it's hard to tell if I'm in this gray haze when I'm in that gray haze. What I want to share is and is a couple in is a couple indicators of what I always feel in that gray haze. The first one being in in social in, in social interactions it feels like i am always one foot in and one foot out i'm never fully involved in n social interactions specifically new social interactions like people i'm extremely com i'm extremely comfortable with i can be fully in that but anything new I'm never fully, I never have space. I never have time in those. I'm always going to do something else. I'm always like chatting while kind of moving. Even if I'm not moving, it feels internally like I'm moving. That's an indicator. Another is I just do not have 
curiosity about meeting other people. That's a very common thing that I feel. I'm not curious about other people. I'm very much self in self involved. Another one is I'm avoiding conflict. Sp specifically e specifically emotional conflict. I kind of see it as not necessary like it doesn't really matter why would I involve myself in that why why don't I just kind of back out of it like it's pointless I, I I don't vibe with these people anyway I don't care about these people these people's opinions I'm not going to make this emotional investment to involve myself in this conflict I use all these excuses to avoid conflict and the last little sign I wrote it down here is I guess similar to what I just said is I feel like I feel like nothing bothers me and this is so tricky because I have I have it it has disguised itself this feeling of nothing but a feeling nothing bothers me with with not with non attachment with something I strive for is to not be attached, but it's different and i'll ex and I'll explain why, but these are a few hints that I have realized coming out of this gray haze that are definitely active while in this gray haze and living a life with these things that I just I just mentioned like feeling like I don't really care I'm non attached when it's really it's really not that I'm um, I'm I'm avoiding conflict I'm not interested or curious about other people I'm always one foot in one foot out when I'm meeting other people when I'm speaking to people when I'm speaking to coworkers that leads to a life for me I'm sharing this for me and for just sharing my truth, but it may resonate with you. And if you made it this far, I'm guessing it might resonate in some 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 way. It leads to a life of extreme of extreme of extreme existence. You're not living in life. And this is this is why. And it's not very often I'm going to share vi I'm going to share videos like this. I don't think I, I may change my mind and share more, but the reason why I share this is because it's extremely life changing. It's ex it's completely changed my life. Learning what I'm about to share right now, like living in that gray haze, will lead you to a life of regret, of getting on your deathbed and being like, "What the fuck did I do?" And I believe it's one of the most important things for what I'm about to share for living a life that you enjoy and being in life and not being the outsider, not being in this gray haze, not knowing you're in the gray haze. It's extremely important, I believe. This is why I'm, I'm sharing it. The reason why I believe I get put in these gray. So what I'm going to share is the reason why I feel like I get put in these gray hazes and how I get out and how I get out of them. Okay. So the reason why I get put in these gray hazes, I want to share this with a story that happened a week ago that snapped me out of my gray haze. It was profound. I was driving across, I was driving across Canada. I'm now in Nova Scotia. I drove from Vancouver. And somewhere in the middle, I stopped at a, at a Canadian Tire, and this guy parked next to me and said, hey, man, nice truck. We started talking and talking and talking and talking, and eventually got to a point where it was like 20 minutes into it. And when I'm, when I'm driving across Canada, I'm like, every last minute that I'm not driving that, or that I'm talking, I'm not driving. And I feel like I'm wasting so much time. 
And this is like the one foot in, one foot out thing. Is like it always feels like I could be doing something else in the conversations when I'm talking to someone. And it was really, uh, it was really alive for me. And he, this is the profound part. He said to me, he's like, yeah, I mean, like, if you want to go right now, just tell me. Just tell me, hey, man, I got to go right now. Stop talking. And I would really appreciate that. Like, you don't have to try to please me. Those were his words. And the moment in time, my past experiences, what I was feeling in that moment just caused something to click of like, fuck, I've been living so extremely fucking safe. I've been living so extremely safe. And not even to branch off that my, my extreme safety of living e of my extreme emotional safety of how I've been living is a disservice to him and disservice to everyone I come in contact with because he would appreciate the he would appreciate the honesty and if I'm in that interaction and I'm not truly there and I wish I was somewhere else that is not doing a service to anybody me or him but that just caused a click of this thing that I remember Matt I remember Matthew Hussey saying in a podcast he I'll share it in a set I'll share it in a second he was talking about nice guys and a framework of mind or a mindset he invites them to have in order to start to to start to to start to dissolve this nice guy ten, this nice guy tendency or this nice girl ten, this nice girl tendency and I'll share it now I think that the phrase that keeps coming up in my mind for this is that you have to at some point decide to live dangerously and living dangerously is all relative if you're mad at me and that makes me deeply uncomfortable and I want to fix it. Living dangerously is me not fixing it. And here's the thing, the main fucking thing. I think I keep saying that, but everything feels like the main thing is to choose to live a dangerous life emotionally to choose that framework that I'm going to live a dangerous life gets you in life. That is the distinction between living a gray life, existing, and being fucking in life. And once you feel like you're in life, you see the life you've been living that was safe, that was comfortable emotionally. And you're like, I would never choose that again. There's, I would never choose that again. I was so dull. I was so not myself, not my true potential. And you see the life that you have, the life force that you have in this. And something I realized is avoiding conflict is uh, is avoiding life not just like the grand scheme of life but like feeling life there's so much life in conflict there's so much life that you get when you're in this conflict with someone else or with something with yourself like to avoid it and play it safe is to remove the possibility of feeling life and there's, I don't think there's anything wor worse I could give someone or wish on someone than that feeling of just existing. Because you're, you're not feeling anything. Choose to live a dangerous life emotionally is to choose to be in life. And I chose this in the moment when he said, the guy at the Canadian Tire said, 
you can just tell me to leave. I chose to live a dangerous life. And from that point on, I did. Every time I had a moment where I, ch- where I had the ability to choose to do the thing that I want to do that felt dangerous or play it safe and use the, I don't really care. I, I, I just do this. I just do this anyway. It doesn't really matter. I chose to do the thing I want to do that felt dangerous. And a few examples I think may you may resonate with or you may show you how my emotional safety bar was so low was when I was driving on the highway across 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 Canada. Sometimes there were just two lanes. Of most of the time there were just two lanes. The left lane is the passing lane of of course. And I'd be in the right lane approaching someone that I want to pass, right? And I'd go to pass him. And then I'd see another car up ahead also in the right lane. It would take me about 25 seconds to catch up to him. So in, in I, I think to myself, instead of going back in the right lane, driving that 25 seconds, and going back out and then passing him and doing the same thing, what I wanted to do and what made the most sense was just stay in, was just stay in, just stay in the left lane until I catch up to him and pass him. But that felt dangerous. <laughs> that felt emotionally dangerous, especially because I saw there's an, another car coming in the le- in the left lane that if I were to move into the right lane would pass me. So I'm holding him up. That conflict of what I assumed the person was thinking about me while I was just staying in the left lane while I passed the second guy that felt emotionally dangerous but I chose that option because that's what I wanted to do that was my first thought that was my that was my that was my instinct and I just stayed in that left lane and that felt emotionally dangerous but that doing that made me feel alive and afterwards, I felt like I have so much more permission to be myself because I tested in real life, did I die from doing that thing? Was that safe? And the answer is always yes. And just proving that to my body, proving that to my mind that I did not die unlocks more. It raises the bar of what is actually safe. Another example is I walked into a gym. I needed to charge my phone. I asked the girl at the front desk if I charged my phone. She said yes. I gave her my phone and gave her my charger. And she, 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 and she says, oh, actually, you, you, um, I have the charger for this phone. You don't need to give me yours. But mine was a fast charger. Hers looked slow and hers was slow. And I, I was only going to work out for like an hour. I needed as much charge as possible. I felt emotionally safe. I mean, emotionally unsafe to say, oh, but mine's a fast charger. Can you use mine? That made me feel unsafe when I thought about doing that. So it was just little moments when I had the ability to choose do the thing that I want to do that feels unsafe or just kind of back out and let go and um, go with the flow. I chose to live dangerously and I kept doing that, kept doing that, kept doing that. And now the threshold for what feels safe, I guess like this is why I'm creating a I'm creating a video right now is because my lens has gotten so much bigger because what is what is ava- what is available to me is so much more now. There's so many more options to do in life. There's so many more options to do in conversations that I'm curious about in, about interactions. I look forward to interactions now because the freedom I feel inside of them I know how deep that they can go I know how deep I can help make them go because of my ability to share and go within 
and the sense of freedom and safety that I feel to just express without any filter there saying, oh, this is not safe to say, this is not safe to do, is why are you acting like this? Ask for, per ask for permission first. There's, n there's a lot less of that now because of how I raise my emotional safety bar. And I believe that's fucking everything. Like, especially for a highly sensitive man who yearns for something deeper and something meaningful. I think this is a trap that a lot of people like that can get into, myself especially. It's just choosing the comfort and using the excuse of non uh, non attachment and once you start to commit to living a dangerous life emotionally you will see you're like fuck me this is life this is life because you're able to be your complete self at least a lot more of yourself than you were before because your lens just opens up and you're able to see things that you weren't able to see before. You're able to feel things you were not able to feel before because it felt unsafe to even feel things because you just got in the habit of playing it so safe. And it's night, it's night and day to how I feel about life when my when i commit to living a dangerous life emotionally and it's only like it, i only really felt like i was committing to living a dangerous life for like the first few days and then it just got into a it just got into a pattern of mine of of course i'm going to choose what i want to do even if there's conflict there and each time i did that and it felt like there was conflict there Fuck, I felt alive. I felt in life. And it's not bec it's not like you you're going and doing things that feel e that feel emotionally dangerous just to feel conflict or just to expose yourself to conflict. No, it's because that's what you want to do. That's what you actually feel inclined to do. That's what you would do if you knew you would be safe through the conflict that's the main difference all right you're staying authentic and in and in in and in integrity with yourself through that and that i feel oh, that idea of how your life is connected to your emotional safety and to live a dangerous life, to commit to live a dangerous life and not choose the comfort of the emotional safety. Commit to facing that conflict. That idea I would really not like if I were to die and not share it. Because it's, it's absolutely life-changing, again, especially for a highly sensitive person. And... Yeah, it's just, it's just so easy, so easy to go down that slope of choosing safety. And it feels good in the moment, but the life that it creates is something that, that I hope you get to experience the other side as fast as possible or in the time where you're supposed to come, come out of it. And look back and be like, holy shit, really? I was living in this gray haze? In this... Yeah. I'll just keep explaining what I already explained. I'll see you around.